Thank you, Dr. Annabel. Shall we look up to God in prayer? Our loving and gracious Lord, we thank you for this beautiful evening. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us as one flock this evening to worship you, Lord, to sing praises to you, to listen to your word, and offer our prayers and petitions. Be with us, Lord. Open our eyes and open our hearts so that we behold the beauty of you and may our hearts receive you. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. Greetings to you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank God Almighty for giving me this privilege of talking to you on the topic, life-saving faith. I thank our pastor, LCC, and the others for giving me this privilege. Faith. Faith and hope go together, you all will agree. And with faith, we have all come into this synagogue, God's house, that we would all be blessed. And uh, Matthew Arnold defines faith as holding fast to unseen goodness. Faith is holding fast to unseen goodness. I just coined an acronym, F for faith, of course. G aids, I in, T, thankful, and H, heart. So faith aids in thankful heart. Another small definition says, faith is hand extended for blessing. I like it actually. Very simple, but then reveals the meaning of faith. Hand extended for blessing. And in Hebrews 11, all of us are familiar, St. Paul writing to the Hebrews in verse 1 writes, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. What a beautiful definition. And you further read in that chapter, chapter 11, one downwards, you read about the faith, the life-saving faith, the enormous faith our forefathers had. Ancients, that's what is the word mentioned there, mainly referring to the patriarchs, okay? First talks about Abel, then Enoch, Noah, Abraham, and so on, so many. And we know about prophets, Elijah, Elisha, they all had tremendous faith, enormous faith. And for example, if you take Noah and Abraham, at, at that time, now we have so many things to believe our God. The mass media, if you open your phone, you get so many lovely hymns, so many sermons, and so many videos. Like, you know, you're drawn to lay your faith or hold on to God with faith. We have so much of access. We have the Word of God. We listen to so many children of God. We have hymns, so many you can add and add, go, uh, add on. But nothing tangible was there. Noah, how did he build such an amazing ark to hold all the animals, pair, female and male, the food that he had to uh, keep safe? Just unimaginable. And amidst accuse, 
Now, the, the, the uh, people around him would have accused, you are foolish, Noah. But amidst all that, Noah was successful in building the ark. And as God said, flood did come. And there was great havoc. At that time, the entire mankind was washed away, except Noah and his family. So like that, we have so many, such a lot of God's people, God's children, just clinging on to God, though nothing was tangible, just God and his voice, they just heard and did accordingly, according to the instruction. Life-saving faith, unwavering faith, enormous and tremendous faith, deep and strong faith. So, even our Lord Jesus Christ, he had such unshakable faith on his father and he gave himself as a ransom for all of us. And he came victorious on the third day. God, the father, raised him up. He's a victor, not a victim. So, when we cling on to our God with faith, our faith keeps increasing. And we have so many examples from the scripture in the Old as well as in the New Testament. And even in history, you know, so many men and women of God who had tremendous faith, life-saving faith, and they lived their lives according to the will of God so very successfully. Just want to share three thoughts briefly. First of all, walking with unwavering faith. Uh, I think, uh, uh, like when I have spoken earlier too, I have uh, shared, a uh, flight was to take off from uh, New York to San Francisco, from one end to the other, east to west, like roughly five and a half or more hours of travel. And the forecast did say that bad weather is there. And the captain in between announces, fasten your seat belts and do not get up and this and that. We will be facing turbulence. All of us have traveled and many of us have experienced turbulence. And there was one little boy who was very, very calm, even during the turbulence. The aircraft was tossed, you know, this side and that side, and probably whatever the flight attendant was uh, having, it, it all toppled, and you can imagine the chaos, and scream. Each one was screaming. But this little boy was joyfully, you know, singing. And towards the end, they asked out of curiosity, how come you were not at all scared? Even if the flight was being tossed this side and that side. And he replied, I know. And I am calm because the one who captains this aircraft is my dad. You would have all heard about it, read about it, but then I thought it's uh, fitting to bring back that so that our faith also will, like a child's faith, you will, we have all heard. Many a time we fail. Children do have faith, but we adults do not apply our faith. So we read that uh, Abel's offering was Pleasing, it was a pleasing aroma. Enoch was taken up. Noah, we just now saw what he did and how God commended. And Abraham, you all know, so many, in so many things he obeyed and had complete, unwavering, um, life saving faith. He, as per the order of Father God, he brings his promised, legal, precious child, Isaac. 
whom he got after so many, many years. Just imagine, he takes everything he prepares and takes and tells the servant, you wait here and we will come back. See the confidence. I don't think I, I have such confidence. <coughs> Sorry. So, likewise, when he was about to slay, God provides a ram. And he knew, he knew, he trusted God. And God we call as Jehovah Jireh, the provider. And in the Old Testament reading, now we have not read, but all of you know, 2 Kings, 4th chapter, 1 to 7, we read about a miracle through prophet Elisha. God does it through Elisha. And you know, a woman comes to this man of God and cries, my husband is no more, and the creditor is coming to take away my two sons. You can just imagine her plea, how grief-stricken she would have been. And this man of God says, what can I do for you? What do you have? She says, nothing, nothing, except little oil. He says, collect empty vessels or jars in some translation it says. Collect empty vessels and go close the door of your house. Start pouring in the oil. She does accordingly, with faith, life-saving faith, she does that. And all the jars are filled. Such abundant blessing from God. Nothing left, no jar was left. She comes and reports to the man of God. Elisha, the prophet. And he says, now sell it and pay the debtor. You and your sons will live. And it happened. So life-saving faith. Like this, even prophet, prophet Elijah, Elijah has performed, our Lord Jesus performed many, many miracles Trusting in God the Father. Now secondly, living with expectant faith. Not wavering faith, half-hearted faith, little faith, okay? Living with expectant faith. So our Lord Jesus himself, you know, whenever he performed the miracles, he thanked God. Sometimes he has prayed, he prayed to God and then performed. Feeding the 5,000, feeding the men, men alone, then the others, you know it all, I'm just quoting. Feeding the 4,000 men, healing the visually challenged, healing the hearing impaired, healing the ones who were suffering out of leprosy, healing the ones afflicted with evil spirits. So many, so many miracles, numerous miracles. So all this, I want to add one more, the woman with issue of blood for 12 years. The enormous faith, the life-saving faith that she had, the expectant faith, she tried all means, finally she knows about Jesus Christ and crowd was thronging. Yet she goes and then touches the hem of our Lord's garment. And there, power from our Lord goes and he knows it. Without even seeing that woman, he knows it. He knew it. And he says, and you know how she was instantly healed. Simultaneously, Jairus' daughter was raised. That again. Expectant miracle, expectant faith. 
in the New Testament lesson that was just read to us from the book of St. Luke, chapter 5, verses 17 to 26, our Lord was teaching and preaching in a place near Galilee. So many around that region all gathered. Um, it seems it's a house fully packed, no room at all. And you find some men in certain translation, uh, it says some men. In one or two, it says four men also. Whatever it is, some men, probably his dear friends, brought a paralytic, a man who could not walk at all. With gr great trust, with great faith, enormous faith, expectant faith, they want to place him in front of our Lord Jesus Christ. But then, as I said, fully it was crowded. So many gathered close to each other, packed. So what they did, right, they climbed up, taking risk. These men took the greatest risk of climbing up, removing certain tiles, made a way, and along with the mat, they lowered this paralytic man right in front of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, our Lord immediately looking at him, he says, Son, your sins are forgiven. In some other versions, it is instead of son, it is said as friend. Amazing. So, like the accusers, the scribes and Pharisees were there, always wait, waiting to find fault. So they were mumbling, who is he to forgive sins? And having known our God is, our Lord Jesus Christ is omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. He knew what was going on in their minds. So he says, son of man has authority to forgive sins. That's what he said. And also, he turns to the paralytic and says, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. So he, we read that he went praising God. And the men who carried the man who was healed, all those who had gathered with faith to listen to our Lord, all of them had great faith, and I'm sure faith increased also, having witnessed this great, great miracle. So this man was physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Your sins are forgiven. God has canceled. Our Lord Jesus Christ canceled his sin. What an amazing, life-saving faith. Do we have that? Many a time, when the situation is not very, you know, conducive or not favorable, you start doubting. May God remove the doubt and may we fully lay our faith in our Lord God. Now, thirdly, growing in enormous faith. Faith actually increases once you start loving our Savior, what he has done for you. Give you life by offering himself. So when we ponder on that and start laying our faith, or having our faith on him, now we find ourselves being filled with hope and faith. Hope and faith go hand in hand together, as I began, I told you. So our patriarchs, as I already mentioned, they all had faith that was growing, you know, day by day. <clears throat> Even the prophets, I already mentioned. You can think of the Hebrew youth, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now they were worshipping our living God, true God. 
but when they were asked to bow down before that metal image they refused and seven times heated furnace was ready and they were there they were put in there but then you all know that they came out without even us the smell of fire our god is great daniel you know how he came out from the lions then god just bound the mouth of the lion in acts lesson we read acts 5 to 16 the apostles you might recall <clears throat> what is written there the apostles uh, inclusive of peter they all met to pray and when they did that men and women started to come and join and they were helping the community and all that you know they grew in fervor with the uh, god and uh, prayer mainly so many started to bring the sick even those were afflicted by evil spirits and they were healing them they waited for peter's shadow to even fall on them that's what you read there so they had such great faith enormous and tremendous faith and the early church grew you know how it grew and how they started to help each other selling their possession and all that finally god bless us today's reading this reading about psalm 72 also i just quote i just want to quote a few lines from there and finish my talk god blesses us if we have tremendous or unmovable or unshakable faith in him psalm 72 verse 17 says all nations will be blessed through god and they will <clears throat> call him blessed may we exalt our god by quoting verse 18 and 19 of psalm 72 Praise be to the God of Israel who alone does marvelous things. Praise be to his glorious name forever and ever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. I just took a few lines from a Vietnamese war survivor. His name was Kim Phuc. He says he survived a napalm bomb i i don't know the maybe it's of great intense you know to destroy he escaped from that bomb and this is what he writes i have suffered a lot from physical and emotional pain sometimes i thought i couldn't live but god saved me <clears throat> and gave me faith and hope So as we read in Hebrews 12 may we also have strong unwavering tremendous life saving faith in our God who's the author that again you read in Hebrews 12 let us fix our eyes upon the one who's the author and finisher of our faith I'll just quote a sentence from a poem Christ in the home by H H Savage Give us homes where faith is treasured where joy is measured by time and the devotion paid the word May God give us such faith as our forefathers the patriarchs or as i mentioned about elijah elisha the prophets and so many even in the world we know so many children of god had life saving faith may god help us to increase in our faith so that we are drawn more closer to him shall we look up to god in prayer our loving and gracious father we thank you lord 
for your word, which came so strongly, Lord. Let us not waver, Lord. Let us be strong in faith. Let us cling to you, Lord, no matter what. There may be storms, trials, temptations, sickness, and so on. But then we know, Lord, who's holding our hand, who's leading us, who loves even to the death on the cross, humbling himself. Lord, may we strengthen, be strengthened by the faith of such kind and be a witness, Lord. Let our lives be a great witness to whomsoever comes in contact. May we tell the others about the saving knowledge and may the ones to whom we speak start having faith in you. In Jesus' matchless and sweet name I pray, amen.